the teachings of a master is heard through the heart how can you hear through the heart you hear through the ears but when it is said you heard hear through the heart means in an atmosphere of lovingness total trust only then you can hear the words of the master otherwise you will always be at the level of logic trying to find meanings in it and you will not find try to understand that all that happens in this life or you achieve is through efforts love is the only thing that does not happen through efforts no efforts are required for love to happen love and grace are two sides of the same coin mean the same thing you cannot attain love through efforts love is springs forth from unknown realm and when energy overwhelms you change begins to happen all that is sublime and divine in nature it is very simple when you are sailing your boat against the breeze it is difficult and when you start sailing it with the wind it becomes effortless to attain to your inwardness no effort is needed for this you simply need a loving heart and then things begin to happen on its own accord love is energy that is springs forth from deep within your being it is an unseen but realized truth in the beginning love is a feeling always love happens as a feeling and as the feeling deepens it becomes energy field love is the only thing that never exhausts in the world if you really know what love is love is not any effort and the paradox of love is more loving you are the more loving you are the more love will enchant you love has nothing to do with the other it has to do with you and you alone the more your capabilities or intensity of loving increases more tranquil you are love goes on increasing in infinite quantum it is a blessing it is not an effort in love you rest in love you rejuvenate love brings freshness love fills your being with ecstasy the day love begins to spring forth and gush to your being you are transformed one cannot attain to this through efforts only by the grace of the one who has experienced this it can happen if you have to prepare your eyes to look at the sun you have to begin with a flame only then slowly and slowly one day you will be able to look at the sun if you have to start straightening your inverted pot in that has been put upside down you will have to begin with the master a master is the beginning when you start overflowing with the master all your fear vanishes trust and certitude arises only then you will be able to find an opening in you if the holy river is to be brought down to the earth you need the one who has brought down and the one who has sustained the force of the flowing river the flow of energy is so intense that an ordinary heart cannot encompass the flow you would have seen the picture of ganges descending from the feet of vishnu the one who lays in the milky ocean it is coming down with such a force that another aspect of the hindu trinity who has matted hair lock he opens his hair lock and ganges gets 
absorbed into it and then slowly and slowly it descends down on the earth. Such is the intensity of love. It is so intense that you will not be able to absorb it. So you need a master who absorbs it, who is overflowing and then he allows bit by bit to flow into you. Your journey has to begin with a master. He will prepare you, he will nourish and nurture you and in the process when you are ready you can have a direct commune and one who listens to even a single message of the master can attain to the whole and one who thus listens to the master his intelligence becomes precious like a gem it is difficult even to listen to the single teaching of the master if you have listened to one single teaching the life will transform but we filter out and try to understand only that which appeals to us. The rest, we do not accept it. And this is the greatest tragedy of, this is the greatest tragedy. It is difficult even to listen to a single teaching of the Master. It is difficult because your life has, whole life has to transform, not only one thing or the other. As you are ready to listen to the Master, things will begin to change. And for this, you have to face to the Master. You have to be within this energy field. You have to learn the art of being silent. And when you are in the company of the Master, you cannot remain in the mind. You will distort the words of the Master. You will give your own meaning to these words and your mind which is aggregate of your conditionings, thoughts, etc., will distort everything. Empty-handed you came and empty-handed you will return. The teachings of the Master is not heard through the mind. This is to be heard through the heart. And when you are listening to the Master, do not bring your mind, your conditionings, your understanding, your belief system. It has to be heard with love and trust. Coming to a master implies that all your efforts have now proved futile. Now you are incapable of moving on your own. In short, this is trust. You can reach the master only when doubt is no more. Without inner preparation, you cannot reach the master. And one thing more, the moment a disciple is born in you, Master appears. Disciple is the one who has dro dropped the realm of the mind, the logic, the thoughts. Trust has arisen in him. He can now trust the unknown. Many come to the Master. But rarely comes a disciple one in whom there is trust. Trust with trust. Surrender becomes possible. Love and trust harmonize the energy of intellect. Only such a person can listen to the words of the Master. And one who listens to a single teaching of the Master is capable, his intelligence attains to a new dimension. There are two ways to listen. One is the way that emanates from the head or intellect. Duality is the way of intellect. Intellect very easily comes to the conclusion. Intellect always thinks in terms of right and wrong, good and bad, high and low. Intellect thinks whether to accept or not. Intellect is supported by ego because it is at the helm of the affairs. Intellect can never trust heart. The culture of intellect dominates. You pass on the street, seeing a hung, hungry beggar, the heart wants to give something. Intellect and others in the car will immediately ask you otherwise. And most of the time, 
it is the intellect that moves. Love springs forth. Intellect will argue that love is blind. Never trust love. Be wise. Love has destroyed many. Love is like a thoroughfare that always leads to the forest and gets lost in the woods of life. Love is path of aloneness. Intellect always follow the crowd. Love needs privacy. Intellect creates so many obstructions that slowly and slowly the heart space shrinks. The gap between intellect widens and then one day you cannot listen to the whispers of the heart. Even your love emanates from intellect. Have you ever thought this? Your heart space becomes barren. There is no ripple, no song, no dance. The teaching of the master is heard from the heart. Kabir says, one who is ready to cut off his head can easily attain to love. Your intellect is borrowed. It is given to you by the society. You are born with heart. This is sad plight. All that is imposed on you becomes important now and your center has moved from heart to intellect. Nanak says one thing of the master, one teaching, Nanak says one teaching of the master alone changes the entire perspective in life. And what is the single teaching? Again and again the message has to be repeated in many ways so that somewhere along the journey, life's journey, you can grasp the crux of the matter. He is the only secret, the principle is that he is the master of the entire creation. This I may never ever forget even for a moment. I do not forget him even for a moment. This is this alone is enough to transform you. There are two words, remembrance and forgetfulness. It is, if you try to remember something, you will again and again forget. But if you do not want to forget this, then something can happen. If you look at a pregnant woman, a change has taken place within her biology. As a result, a growth is taking place now. She engages in household activities, cooking, cleaning and many such things. However, she remains aware of the new growth taking place within her. A new life has begun to sprout in her. All through her daily activity, this remembrance remains in her like an undercurrent. Even while walking, bending to pick up something, she never forgets, even for a moment. This is remembrance. Remembrance is not an effort. It is spontaneous. If it is any effort, then one may forget sometimes while engaged in other works like sleeping, walking, driving, walking, etc. That which comes through effort is not remembrance. When this remembrance is part of your being, when each cell of your being is soaked in this, Nana calls this as Ajapa Jap. The remembrance, like you are trying to remember the words or mantra or zikr. You can do it loud using the labial sound or you can hear it what it is happening within. Ajapa means that which is not used through the labial sound. In Sufi terminology, the two words are used, zikr, zehar, when you use the labial sound and the words to continue to chant the zikr or the words. The other is the khafi. Khafi means the silent. In the West, Gurdjieff has called this as self-remembrance. His work is tremendously on this aspect, self-remembrance. 
He says if you go on remembering that something crystallizes in you after some time, you have to remember that he alone is the giver, he alone is the sustainer of the entire creation and this you never forget even for a moment. Nanak says there is no need to leave the world. You do not need to go to the mountain or cave or somewhere else. Entire world is permeated by the same energy. Wherever you will go, you will find his hands. You will find a vast congregation of followers, the Sikhs, Sufis. They are all involved in worldly activities because nothing is outside the creation. But they have forgotten the other half of the truth. The entire thinking and way of life becomes worldly. One has to remain in the middle, but intellect always chooses the extreme. And when this remembrance that he alone is the sustainer remains in you, then you can be in the world, but the world will not be within you. You can even make an ordinary world meaningful. It all depends on your level of understanding. Nanak says one who listens to one message of the Master, his intellect gets like a precious gem. Why is Nanak talking of these precious gems? Nanak is using this word for the reason. When need arises, you may leave everything but not the precious gems. If you have some precious gems or jewels in you, you will always preserve them. He says that this remembrance of the Master is like the precious gem. And that is important to remember. Try to understand this. This is the way and the search of the entire world. Everyone aspires to be known in one way or the other. Nanak says, what is the avail of this if you are not in harmony with him and the entire world knows you? What would you gain? Have you ever seen any rich man contented? Nanak says, even if you get everything, contentment never comes until you begin to like him. And this can happen only when you are in harmony with the cosmic law. The moment you are in harmony, it is even better than taking a bath in the holy river or visiting the holy places. Nanak says he renders many qualities to those who lack these. And also it is because of his grace that such qualities are multiplied many fold. Do you think when a change takes place in you, is it because of your effort? Yes, in the beginning it is an effort. A stage comes when effort becomes meaningless and then grace begins to descend. You are doing your effort, but you are having the thought deep within your remembrance that whatsoever is happening, whatsoever is happening in and around me, it is because of the grace. When I speak, there is a force, there is a mellowness, softness of the words. It is all because of his grace. When I cook something, people appreciate the taste. Why is this happening? It is because of the grace of that which is. It is the grace when it descends and becomes the part of the food. And when people taste it, it is indirectly they are tasting the grace of the Master, grace of the unknown. And it is the grace that makes the food full of nourishment and taste. Have you ever witnessed when you are in love with someone, your beloved accepts you, what happens? What is the state of your joy? In love, you move as if you are flying. There is a glow on your face. 
your eyes speak of something different. This is the reason that you cannot hide love. Love always finds expression. Such is the case with ordinary life. What will happen if entire existence accepts you and you are in love with totality? The aspirant or the devotee is thirsty for God, just as a lover is thirsty for the presence of his beloved. And whenever love is so intense that the baser becomes sublime, just the simple teaching that he alone is the master of the entire creation, and this I may never ever forget. If this is eternal, inner core, by inner thirst, then even one teaching of the Master becomes precious. Nanak says, once you turn inward, a new journey begins. Just remember him alone. And as his light turns towards you, everything changes. Anger, lust, and all such negativities vanish. That alone can give you the real fulfillment of life. Nanak was not learned. Also, he was not rich. He was born in an ordinary family like you and I. Yet still miracle happened. When this happened to Nanak or a Kabir, why this can't happen to you? Yes, indeed it can happen to you only if your face turns towards him. And this can happen with only one teaching that you can hear through the heart that he is the master of the entire creation and this I may never ever forget even for a moment. This is the most important aspect of that I never ever forget even for a single moment.